hey, back with Awakening with Allie. It's Allie. How are you guys? So excited for another show. I have such an incredible guest. We're going to have such a powerful and fun, different type of conversation today. And it's going to light me up in a whole different way. So I can't wait for you guys to hear this guest and hear this conversation. But before we do, I just want to say I have so much gratitude for all of you who have been subscribing, listening, sharing the show, commenting on the Awakening with Ali Instagram, following there engaging. It really means so much to me. It shows me so many of you are wanting to dive deeper into all of this space, which lights me up in a whole nother way. And I want to thank Soak, my incredible sound frequency partner who you hear at the beginning and end of this show for sound frequency healings, as well as my breathwork offerings that are on there. The app is so powerful. There are so many amazing frequencies and different programs and offerings you can tap into for affirmations and all kinds of empowerment. So check that out if you haven't already. Soak, S-O-A-K.com or go to the Soak app anywhere on your phone and download it. Use code Ali, A-L-I, 70, capital A-L-I, 70, and you will get 70% off your first month to really dive in and check it out. So I am so honored. I have the beautiful healing and wellness with color therapist, Wala. And let me tell you guys a little bit about Wala before I bring her on here. So Wala says, color is an expression of self, your emotions, mood, or attitude, but also permeates inward, influencing how we feel. Each feeds the other, the outside world and the internal spirit in a constant state of flux. She would be thrilled to share her insights into color therapy with all of you and get to listen to this amazing mini color reading that we're going to do today. We're going to talk all about how she has developed a unique five modality system for harnessing energy to develop emotional fluidity, which uses a combination of color frequency, crystal sound healing, body release movement, mental reprogramming, and breath work to lead her clients to live fearlessly and find spiritual freedom. And you guys, I'm so excited about this. Walla has been featured in Red Magazine, Nylon, Refinery20, Bustle, you name it, off the volume with Caitlin Bristow. I mean, she has been everywhere and she speaks all about how to use color in your daily life, how to raise your vibration, color meditation. This is going to be so much fun. She encourages women to spiritually and emotionally evolve, which y'all know I'm all about, giving us as much support as they need to to move beyond fear, exit toxic relationships, cleanse their energy, release blockages, develop a strong self-understanding through acceptance of their own shadow and discover a deep connection to their Purpose. And she has a book, Heal Yourself with Color, Harness the Power of Color to Change Your Life, that was released in July of 2021. And all of that will be in the show notes. Voila, thank you so much for being here. Oh, no, thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited about this conversation. Yes, and I feel like we have so much in common being that, you know, I came from the celebrity styling space for so many years, and I've always felt that color played a huge part in different things I was putting people in and their vibrations and how they felt. And I used to speak to that when I would dress people and half my clients couldn't even like resonate with it or like managers and agents would be like, whatever, just pick a color. It's not a big deal. And I'd be like, no, it is a big deal. And like, you know, and I would try to explain to them and I wasn't even really awakened fully to this. I was just like, knowing like what my passion was. And so I just love that like you're all about that along with of course now me being in my facilitation for breath work. I love that you combine breath work. So there's just so much goodness we can get into here. But before we do, why don't you tell us a little bit kind of like how you got here and got into this colorful space and why you are so passionate about this and sharing this kind of therapy. So my my story began a long time ago with color nearly more than 10 years ago, but working with color, I'm nearly at 10 years. So many years ago, I was in Japan. I was living a life that from the outside, everybody thought, you know, if you look at it, you'd be like, oh, it's perfect. It's really nice. You're happy. She's happy. She's married. She's, you know, living in a, in Tokyo. And But I was really, I was feeling really trapped and I was really miserable. And I didn't understand that I even, I didn't understand that I was i was just wondering why i had this feeling that i didn't know what it was and then as i was mo- as i was living there i used to watch all these people wearing all these colors and i would go and buy these colors and i couldn't put them on and i was really struggling of where i want to go what's my purpose and what's happening in my life i was going through a lot of loss and 
I reached the point where I was like, okay, just my life has no meaning. And then I heard a voice in, inside, just like, park your worries and just stay present and you'll see magic. And that's what I did because I felt like I didn't have another option. And then color frequency and, and a color program came on my lap. And then I started looking at it, but it was one of those like, which color works for you, etc. Which one looks good on you? I started with that and then I started moving into more of a color therapy space because I wanted more. I've always been attracted to colors and, and, and their meaning and what they do. And then, um, and then it just, and then I started working with a color therapist myself and it just completely changed my life. I was able to open up. I remember one of my biggest stories was with green. I used to hate green. And when we have that kind of feeling towards a color, it's because of something we are avoiding. And green is really all about allowing yourself to be vulnerable and seen. And, I've, and because of my life, I had a lot of walls that I had put around myself as a response to the trauma, as a response to different things that were happening in my, in my culture. I came from a culture that's very suppressive towards women. I come from Kuwait. So honor killing is still a thing where I come from. So it's just like all these horrible things. So it was really hard to be vulnerable, really hard to be open when I, when I wanted to be different. I wanted, you know, a different life than, you know, what was allowed um, and that was honorable in a sense. And, um, and that would really, you know, and then working with her, allowing me to understand my vulnerability and make peace with green and make peace with what was triggering about green, what was triggering about um, having it around me, why was it like this? It just really helped me tapping into my vulnerability, my sensitivity, understanding that my sensitivity is my superpower. And then slowly I started working on many different things. And for the last nearly 10 years, I've been doing this for other people too, with many different ways. I combine sound, breath work, like you said, and different things. Well, that's amazing. And thank you so much for sharing that of your story. And I can't even imagine coming from that space, like you said, of like where all that is like allowed and then stepping into this, such a vulnerable, empowered state, but like how amazing good for you. And now you've like taken your power back so much. Now you're helping others in this colorful space. And it was so interesting when you mentioned green, because when I would style a lot of different people, green was a color that a lot of people pulled back on. And to be honest, I didn't really understand why. Um, I I would see how it could be kind of an intimidating color and in different shades and different ways. Cause I also learned uh, when I studied in um, London and overseas color matching and different color matching, you know, on people and, you know, using those palettes and things. So I knew the basics, but I didn't fully understand. So you just saying that just like opened my eyes and, and mind up so much of like, wow, I guess that was so many clients that were also going through their own journey with in that you know that magazines when they have someone wearing green on the cover they don't sell there has been a study yeah and it's just this um ma um this was a very old study and i believe it was done with folk i'm not sure don't quote me specifically on it because i i yeah with these things in my memory is not the best but it's because we are taught vulnerability is bad. And this is what we're responding to the frequency because colors don't actually exist. Colors are a translation of frequency by our brain. So the light falls on our eyes and then our brain says, oh, this is the frequency of green. So you see green or this is the frequency. So whenever you're attracted to something or hating something, you're hating or repelled by a, a certain frequency and a certain, not really the color. It's the frequency and all that and every frequency as we know holds different feelings different emotions different body parts all these different things and it's just such a beautiful map i always say it's like the gift from the sun it's the gift of light it's just a translation of the language of light color and it just tells us so much because we're responding to color subconsciously we're not really conscious about our feelings towards colors until we go like okay what's happening here and it's just such a such a beautiful fun thing to play with and work with so green people are responding 
badly to green or not is because I don't want to be seen as vulnerable. I don't want to be seen as forgiving. I also don't want to be seen as envious. So like the shadow and the and the, the light aspect of each color. Wow, that's amazing. So if you wouldn't mind, could you break down kind of the basics of like, you know, the the normal colors people obviously like are drawn to and, and what they wear and kind of the meanings behind them? I mean, why? Because like you just said, it's it's really a frequency. It's really not the color. It's the frequency and the vibration of what's actually coming from that. And I think that alone is eye-opening for so many people listening and watching right now because they probably just go in their closet to get dressed and just see in their mind, right, a color and they put it on and they don't really think much more of that or they have something sitting in their closet that they don't wear and they don't think much more of that. And so it would be cool if you could kind of break down a little bit more of the frequencies behind, you know, uh, the most like basic colors and, and, you know, and why, um, you know, we perceive them that way and like what they carry. Uh, well, so let me think, I'm just trying to think of like, what's the funnest way and more most, cause every color is like so complex and it comes with different shades and different things. Like, as you said, so the darker shades are usually like inward colors and taking everything in and absorbing. And then the, the brighter, the brighter ones are just like out outwards. Yeah. That's kind of like the basics. When I explain it to people, I think when you're looking at white, you're looking at, you're reflecting everything, you're deflecting everything. So if you're wearing too much white, that means you're not allowing yourself to go inside, you're always outside. And that's a good question to ask yourself why. And then when you are always wearing black, which is so common, black is inwards, inwards, taking in, taking in, closing, hiding. I love black. I think it's a great color, but constantly needing to be protected is also another question we have to ask ourselves. And then a lot of people have strong feelings towards red. And red is a color that is always like when you wear it, you're the center of attention. People, people will see you. So what is it about being the center of attention that I grew up learning that I shouldn't be? What, why is attention dangerous? For example, this is one of the questions I'm just trying to uh, um, pink. A lot of women don't want to be associated with pink because it's that bimbo, stupid, not smart. They can't be taken seriously because pink is all about compassion, kindness and softness, especially the rose. Um, when I'm talking about this pink specifically, I'm talking about the rose quartz pink and women really don't like that powdery pink especially the ones who are working um, because they want to be, you know, they're working corporate jobs. They want to be taken seriously. And they don't think because we ha created this um, commercial idea of like, you know, legally blonde, that pink is you can't be taken seriously. Um, and the media plays a huge role as well in how we perceive different colors. Um, so this is another one. Um, and then also when you're looking at colors, there is every, every response to a color wherever it is is also another thing so the colors you wear if you don't want if you don't like this color on you it's you don't want you don't like people to see you as this frequency so if you don't like to wear green you don't want people to see you as green but you like it on other people so you like to see people vulnerable um, when you have it in your interior, you like to be surrounded by that frequency. It frequency helps you, etc. It just depends on where you're putting it. Yeah, that's amazing. And I also really love that you talked about kind of the darker palettes versus the lighter of like how that really is more of the integrating of shadow of wanting to go within wanting to kind of be covered up and, and, and not be seen and, and then also how you spoke to when you're looking at someone else and you love a color on someone else you're not actually realizing you know consciously most people that like you actually really enjoy that frequency and what you're receiving but maybe you can't give it to yourself so I guess before we get into my mini color reading, I guess a question I would have is, is like when people are working with you and they're kind of experiencing this with colors and they're realizing like their blocks and, you know, what they aren't willing to wear or have around them, whatever it may be, how do you start to 
transmute and essentially alchemize those situations for them and for them to step into so much power with color? So when we do this, this is a great question. I wish everybody on every podcast asked me that question. <laughs> um, this It's like um, what we do is when we figure this out, we're able to take we're able to take people or we're, a, we're able to go into a space together where we open up the energetic healing and the emotional healing. And then we bring in the color through visualization, through sound and through breathing in this color or out this color. Yeah. And we work on removing them from the subconscious because as soon as you visualize a color, you're like whoosh, talking to your subconscious mind. You're talking to your soul. You're talking to your inner world. And when you're telling this, okay, I'm taking this color out from this position and this is this feeling and this belief is in, in this color and we're taking it out, we're releasing it. Your subconscious mind is responding, your energy is responding. And I'm also doing, I do a lot of energetic work channeled energetic work for people so it's all a, it's a combination of all the stuff but it's incredible how people move into a space of just falling in love with themselves more understanding why like with women for example why they like this color on men and they don't like another color on men um if they're looking for you know that kind of relationship um when people yeah, so what do they like about a partner? It just helps you understand and know what you want deep. So it's kind of like a combination. That's amazing. So I feel like this is a good place to go into my mini color reading. I'm so excited to uh, experience this and get to have this conversation because I feel like then people also get to experience through me and listening or watching, uh, you know, like what this is all about. And if it's something that they're needing, you know, um, in their space to be able to shift and maybe, you know, bring in things that they're hindering from themselves or expand more that they're not realizing that they can step into. So tell me, how does this work? Okay. So usually when I start with people on the color reading, I take them through, um, an introduction of what was what's the session going to be because it's very intuitively led and um so i what i will ask you to do in a second is i'm gonna ask you to take close your eyes take a deep breath and just open your energy for me let me see what i can tap into first and then i'll ask you for your birthday the day you're born will represent the color energy that you came into this world into this life with and this frequency holds who you are what's your essence what are your shadow? What is your light as a soul that came here? And then the month you were born represent the challenge you came here. What did your soul want you to learn? What challenges did your soul want you to learn through? And then the year usually, but usually I don't do them in, in many readings, but the year is like where your soul actually wanted you to go. Um, so it's kind of like, she gives us like an interesting path of, of what your soul intended for you here. Sometimes it's general because people only need that. It just depends on how you want to receive it, how much. So just, yeah, it depends on where we go with this. It's like I just go into it. Sometimes um, I will be prompt to do a healing and a, and a release in the session. Sometimes it's more conversational. Um, so it just depends on each person. So let's see where yours takes us. Sure. All right, so I just want you to close your eyes for me and open up as much so I can serve you as much as I can. Okay, the first thing I'm picking up on is like a very strong energy in your eyes and a and whenever I see that, it's always like a person who uh, is triggered by visuals. Yeah, it's someone who's like really cares about visual, but also I'm tapping into um, an orange energy in your stomach. So I want to see what that leads us. What's your birthday? Hit me. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, and asking for your birthday. You can open your eyes now. Okay, I didn't know we could open yet. My birthday is July 12th, 1985. So you're a yellow. 
violet with a path of blue that so whenever people who are born here are yellow i'm a yellow so i totally get it they're usually people who are who have very very strong energy as soon as they walk in anywhere it's like people just see it it's just especially when they're open but a lot of yellows just close with perfection and needing to be perfect and needing to always outperform and and that comes from a place of except a journey of needing to accept the shadow accept the imperfection and see the beauty of the imperfection in your world in your life in who you are and because you you know because you have a lot of power to do so much in a great way that can also be the power that hinders you also yellows need to know everything in a sense of they have this big need of i need to know what is going to happen i need to know and map out everything everything has to be mapped out everything has to be seen they're the perfectionists they're the very mental um they're very men mentally driven color archetypes but then they have also because of the mental they have intense emotions they feel things very strongly um d different than people who are for example orange orange people flow with their feelings they can feel a big spectrum without going to the extreme and and something like the sensitivity with the yellow is like really sensitive and and the closing of a yellow is really completely shut down and what's it really interesting about your journey your challenge is to be the opposite of who you are so when we're talking about a violet um, energy we're talking about a creative spiritual spiritually creative um, energy and an energy that is that trusts the universe that doesn't need to plan and al allowing the universe to, to to take them and understanding that they don't need to know the end point they just need to take the next step and your challenge is really you know the opposite of who you are it's just it's really interesting what your soul decided it wants to do <laughs> it decided it wants to come here and be like you need to flow above your emotions as well you, you need to flow above the intensity you need to trust your biggest lesson really is to trust in the universe constantly and also trust in your own power that you have it and it doesn't need to be validated by anyone but the universe and because you need to learn that because your soul wants you to live in extreme authenticity and expression in whatever expression looks like in whatever way expression looks like for you it's really interesting you doing a podcast because it's like aligned with your soul's mission because it's about expressing telling telling people things all the things that you've learned but then what i'm also shown by your guides is that there is a tendency where you stand in it and then you go back in you go up and you go back in and this is and you, you have a lot of caving that you do if you understand what i mean by caving uh, but that that's okay it's not a bad thing but constantly doing it tires you out and you need to learn that you don't need to completely go all out again the thing with the perfection you need to do everything in the most perfect way and then this also takes us yellow is also about deep 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 childhood and it takes us back there and all the stuff that we work with and when i work with people and anyone who works most of the time you know that we all go back to our childhood and we all go back to dissolving these things that we decided about ourselves we learned when we were seven about the world and but when you're a yellow it's really because a yellow is inner power inner courage to be able to find inner power and inner courage you have to face your deepest inner fears and your deepest um 
you know, fears about yourself, imperfections, to be able to be fully in, in that yellow power. And we have to go to the inner child. It's amplified. Your childhood experience, uh, most yellows that I know, including myself, had had really difficult childhoods because that's what they are here to learn to dismantle and understand. I'm not saying the other color archetypes don't, but with yellow is emphasized. With orange, for example, their relationship with the mother is emphasized and with the feminine is emphasized. The, the yellow is more about duality as well. The duality is emphasized in their experience. Wow. So this, this, yeah, just, uh, <laughs> this is what we're really working with when you're here as a yellow. Well, thank you for sharing that. That resonates deeply. Uh, so just so you know, uh, very uh, deeply. And, you know, it's funny, this uh, theme of trust keeps coming up for me in all different ways in my life. And I'm finally slowly learning how to trust. And it has not been an easy journey because you're right. My mental and even my visual way of doing things is very much like it needs to be in front of me and I need to be able to see it. And I need to be able to say, yes, signing off on this. No, not signing off on that. And the universe and God and everything have challenged me over the last few years, especially since stepping into motherhood, how complete opposite uh, that really is and learning how to just continue to trust and trust and trust. And, you know, it's um, when you were speaking also about the having to uh, show up in the most perfectionist way. Uh, very much also resonates because as a celebrity stylist and TV personality and all these kind of, you know, ego, you know, projects and, and moments and, you know, personas of myself, if you will, I was always the perfectionist, you know, always the ridiculous, you know, failures and Botox and, you know, so much makeup and so much everything to make sure that I was quote unquote perfect for what I was doing and showing up for. And I really lost myself along the way without even realizing it. And it took till I went through my heavy postpartum depression with my first daughter to realize like, who the fuck are you, Allie? Like, you know, it really, it really um, crushed me. And I had to really go through that deprogramming you kind of spoke of and really release everything in order to align with my soul and in order to like really find the light within myself because I was in such a dark place. And I also had to really get real with myself about being a people pleaser and how my entire life, that's something I've always done. That has how love has followed me in many ways. That is how I have been able to make other people happy in clientele and all of these things and how much that wasn't serving me. So everything you spoke to really resonated. And especially when you said the authenticity, you know, that's kind of how this show was born. You know, I have another podcast I've had for two and a half years. It's been wildly successful. And I like got this like vision and download one morning that I was going to create a new show. And I remember sitting there logically and being like, that makes no sense. I have this other show. Like, why would I start something new? And my soul was just like, like, no, no, this, do you have to, like, this is part of your expression. And and it, I just sat there and I got this vision of actually, it's funny you talk about color, like these beautiful pink and purple soft colors, like above my head. And it said awakening. And that was where I kind of got the name. And then I realized, okay, it's awakening within me. And so you sharing that, like just further uh, helps me to like, kind of affirm like that trusting of starting this at the beginning of 2022. And, and what I felt with this, with my soul, even though I'm like, I really honestly don't have any clue where I'm going, but somehow in just trusting, I'm meeting right. amazing people like yourself and others from my guests and have these powerful conversations. And it's the same with my breath work. It was like, you know, I was doing, you know, styling all that very much public eye, all the things. And then, like I said, went through my massive kind of transformation, felt like I kind of went back in the cocoon, how you're speaking to the cave and, you know, went in the cocoon and then now starting to slowly come out and realize that like, that's not lighting up my soul the way it used to for several reasons. And there's so much darkness there and like letting go of that and moving into things that do light me up, but that are not truly something that I would have thought. Like if you would have told me I was going to be a breathwork facilitator, I would be like, 
<laughs> what are you talking about? I've been somebody stylist my like half my you know career. Like like I've loved fashion my entire life, and it's funny. I, I think about now on a soul level how I can start to bring fashion and like the consciousness of that into the breathwork space and and allowing that to further you know bloom and, and blossom as I step further into this. But when you spoke to that spirituality side you know, that was another thing for me that I had to really be like, I'm just going to trust this, even though I don't really necessarily feel like I fully know this, obviously my soul does. And there's something about this that lights me up and brings me into this space. And so here I am. So yeah, the, the trust, the authenticity, like I've had to really shed so many layers of myself over the last few years and continue to, um, every time something comes up, I, I, I have to remind myself not to look at like what's in front of me and to trust. And like you said, take the next step. So I just wanted to let you know, that was very much, uh, resonates and in alignment with what I've been going through and what I've been continuing to experience. And I'm pregnant with my third baby right now. And, um, you know, I'm further trusting, you know, within that and all that with my pregnancy, with my birth, with, with everything, and really like leaning into that trust, um, and nothing else and letting everything else kind of go out the window. And it, and it's, uh, it's scary and beautiful at the same time. Yeah, totally. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. That's just, it's just part of your journey, but also like sometimes when we let go of the perfection of our jobs, we tend to go, I need to be the perfect mom. I have to do everything so perfectly. I have to perfect my, uh, and it's all like all these things that we, again, decided at seven <laughs> that will give us worth and love. And, you know, every time you think, oh my God, I've healed from this and I've done this, I've worked on it. It's like, oh shit, something else comes up and you're like, oh my God, there's more inside this onion. I always tell my clients, like we're peeling this onion slowly. Sometimes these onions are so full, other onions are just really, you know, easy to go through. But yeah, it's just incredible how, how where life takes us, especially when we trust. Yeah, trust has been a huge, uh, huge, huge lesson for me over and over again. But the more I trust, the more shows up. And then it continues to like turn off my ego and show me like, all of that is just stories. Like you said, all of that is essentially false protection, you know, all these things and allowing myself to step into my higher self and continue to trust and trust and trust. It just keeps opening up more and more. And it's funny, like my, my mind and even myself, like wants to figure it out and understand it. And like something will happen. And I'm like, but wait, how did that happen? And I've had to really let go of that and just be like, yeah. I have to trust in this because things keep showing up for me. Like that's not a coincidence. Like there's a reason why it keeps showing up. So, so, so yeah. So thank you very much for that. And yeah, when you speak to childhood too, like, you know, I think about when I was a kid, I think I always had this magic within me and it was kind of just shut down because it was like seen as like, you know, like, oh, you know, what is she talking about? Or like, oh, she's out there. I mean, my parents even told me, uh, I think it was either in kindergarten or first grade um, that, you know, my teacher said to my parents, like, Allie's not here. She's not present in class. I don't know where she is. Maybe I'd like to be where she is because it seems like she's over in La La Land, but like, she's not here. And I remember like, you know, being talked about, of course, about school and how, you know, I need to be present and this, that, and the other thing, but it never resonated for me. And school, I never did well in school. Even when I would study my ass off, it just didn't, it never clicked. And it really frustrated me because I always like felt so much other like magic outside of everything else. And it led me to, you know, drugs and alcohol and all these different things that I, you know, needed to essentially be in a cave and to be deep within myself and to kind of get lost with different people that were also lost and all these things. And when I think about all of that and like, you know, how much I was suppressed of my own kind of creativity, that's something I really, really work on with my children. And I love that you said that about, you know, not being the perfect mom, because I've also had to really let go of that, especially having a four-year-old and a two-year-old, like it is <laughs> chaos all the time. And breath work has been such a blessing because I breathe with them and we shift emotions and move through things. And if they won't breathe, then I breathe, you know, and it's been so helpful. 
and, you know, just allowing that messiness and like showing up in that. And then also being able to like show them that, that like I can be messy and that I can repair things and we can move forward has been such a gift and been so helpful for me on a conscious level because it's not perfection. It's just being conscious to what's going on. And then if I don't stay conscious in a moment, repairing in that and moving forward in it, you know, and, and still allowing their creativity, um, especially my four-year-old who's super independent in Aries and everything else um, and letting her, you know, shine and be who she is um, and empowered, you know, at such a young age. And so it's been really uh, wild and hard, but also really beautiful to get to be a part of their journeys. I'm very interested to see what baby number three is going to be like um especially since you said orange and I'm like oh well I mean I wonder if that's why you were like feeling like oh, you know? yeah because I felt it here and it felt like usually when it's orange in here it's like mom stuff yeah pregnant yeah so you know I mean it's just um it's true though you know and it's so interesting um, when you do trust all this and you're open to all of it. And I understand that for so many that are kind of still awakening to this, this is really hard to swallow. This is really hard to take in. I mean, my husband will say to me, like, I don't believe that, you know, and, 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 and it's hard because I am now so deep in this and I'm like, okay, you know, and I'll continue to kind of see things show up and I'll just have to kind of I've had to become the observer a lot in my life. And that's been also a lesson to me because I yeah. was always someone who had to, you know, um, correct constantly and under, and like you said, know it all and do this and do that. And so becoming the observer has been another huge part of my own trust within myself, but also within everything that's around me. So, um, you know, thank you so much for that. That was so powerful. Is there anything that you would say um, from that little mini, uh, you know, reading in session that I should do? Is there anything I need to know, like to release? Like, I'm just curious, you know, from that. Um, it would be interesting is like right now, what, I, what you're saying about where you are now, it feels like you're in your challenge a lot. You're in the violet a lot. Just don't let go of the yellow because that's your essence. So make sure you're con you have yellow around you from time to time make sure you check in what's the yellow where is it in my in my in my body where, where is it living and yeah keep going the, with the stuff that you're doing and chat, yeah and letting go of perfection is like a big onion <laughs> yeah no kidding yeah thank you i love that fine keep checking in where, where the yellow is in me that's beautiful i love that i'm gonna take that with me. Um, so for anyone that's listening, that is like really curious about this, but maybe like I just said, like they, they can't get on board or they don't fully understand this. It's not resonating for them just yet, but it's piqued their interest. Like where do they start as far as, of course, they come to you for a color session, but where do they start just as far as like the basics of starting to kind of recognize color differently and start to step into this world of color and frequency and being conscious of like this much deeper essence of color than what we've been taught. I always tell people to start with their closets, just open them and look, is there a common color? Which one feels better? What does it feel? Some people usually have uniforms, like my fiance have, has, has a color uniform. No matter how hard I try to get him out of it, it's like this is his color uniform and it needs to be respected um some people will whenever they look at their closets after they listen to something talked about with color they'll go like oh i never realized i have this much so it's an interesting start and then on my website i'm working on creating a journey for people to get them to because everyone because i really believe that each one of them can have their unique important relationship with color and that's what I'm working on helping people do so there they're gonna start they can start with doing a color quiz and this quiz it's not a quiz it's just really a question about their birthday and it'll tell them what's their color archetype the first one and then they'll get a series of email that will give that will send them to the shadow aspect of it and explain to them the shadow and the light of of color and how you can work on it. So this is another way I'm work because I, when I was looking for color, it was really hard to find information on it. And it was really difficult to find that information that felt that really resonate. So this is what I'm working towards. Um, and a lot of my things on my website are now donation based, except for like one on one time 
um, live with me. But other than that, everything on it is like online course, everything is donation based. Um, and just, just see how it feels. If you're a person who wears a lot of black, test out a week without it. If you're a person, and see what, if you're looking, for example, what's your issue with money? Check what you feel about gold. What triggers you about gold? I think these little things. That's amazing. So cool. I mean, I love everything you share. This resonates so deep for me. And like, especially just in the styling space into the space I'm in now, it's just so cool. And I love how you really take it to that kind of the next level of not just the vibration, but also the shadow and like what it's showing you. So for anyone who's like listening and watching, you know, like she said, like start in your closet, you know, go in there and essentially look in, around and see like, what is it that I have? What do I have maybe too much of what it, you know, what is maybe missing? Like, what color are you not allowing in? And ask yourself, like, you know, is there a deeper meaning behind that? And then, of course, if you need guidance, you know, uh, go to Wala, which of course everything will be in the show notes. Um, Wala, before I let you go, is there anything else that uh, you would love to share? This was so amazing. Thank you for getting so deep with us into color and vibration and frequencies. This has just been so freaking cool. Um, I could clearly n nerd out on it for uh, quite a few more hours. Um, and tell us where we can find you and follow you. And again, everything will be in the show notes. And yeah, um, most of the time on, I'm on, you know, very responsive on Instagram, um, my email. Um, I try, I do my best to, to just really talk and chat with people. I've created an Instagram account called colorways.academy, which has all the color information, less lifestyle stuff, um, more color information on that one. So cool. And I'll link all of that in the show notes. And people can also grab your book, which has all this information yes. as well, and kind of let them dive in further if they're kind of wanting to explore this journey, right? Um, they can grab the book. Um, and yeah, uh, this has just been so cool. Thank you for sharing all about color with us and, and everything you're doing. I can't wait to see what you create with the questionnaire and, and all the information. And thank you again for, you know, just sharing it all here. I hope for anyone listening or watching, this truly helped further awaken something in you or activated something in you really go into your colors guys and ask yourself like, you know, what is this maybe showing you or what is, you know, not showing up for you and, and why, and, and get curious, you know, like I tell all of you on every episode, if there's a reason you're listening here, there's probably a curiosity. There's some type of awakening. There's something that's come into your space, trust in your soul. Like Wala said, clearly that's my message. It's my, been my journey over and over and over again to continue to trust. Uh, so just reminding all of you and Wala, thank you so much for being here. Love, light, and all the color and blessings, everyone. Thank you so, so much. And until next time, bye.